great investor, I don't think you'll be celebrating Chinese New Year. Fortunately, the sell-off in January of this year, you know, is basically one of the largest sell-off. Now, just look at the screen here. Oh my goodness, you know, this that practically all the reads are in the rate for this month. Only two exceptions. One, that is a Suntech read that's above its price from last December. And another one that's actually flat. The rest of the 40 reads listed in Singapore are down. Yes, it's down a lot. So essentially, let, in today's video, let's go through essentially, you know, what caused the sell-off in this read so huge in this month. Were you able to preempt it as what we have done so? And thirdly, essentially, where does the market go from here? Essentially, the sell-off and the correction has been fast and furious this particular month. What does it mean for Wall Street? You know, I was interviewed in Business Times this week, and essentially, this is what I said, right? I say that essentially, it is difficult to fathom a bear market, not even way back in 1970s, where essentially, you actually have a double digit inflation close to 20%, yet you didn't have a bear market. So, where does it end? Okay, so once again, ladies and gentlemen, once you like what you, what you hear or see, you actually smash the like and subscribe button. Send us an email at gcpglobalsg at gmail.com and then give us your name, your personal particulars, as well as the person that you recommend that has subscribed to our YouTube channel, and then you'll be in to win a lucky draw prize at the end of February. So now let's get back to the matter at hand. Well, this is the chart again, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, yes, yes. You notice that those who actually went into reads or who are holding on to reads have lost big. You know, never have seen the read market started in 20 years ago since uh, other than the event that you saw during the 2008 crisis, as well as the very short period between 19th of February last year, uh, or rather the year before, and uh, the uh, early March, you know, when the pandemic was in folk, uh, do you see REITs actually fall that much in such a short period of time? Now, now look at the other chart now. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, if you are or belong to the so-called smart money phenomena, now smart money are normally the smarter money that are offered IPOs, that are offered secondary placements, you know, either institutions, index funds, ultra high net worth individuals, or family offices. You notice that based on the placements, yes, there are seven placements in the year before. That's 2020. And guess what? How many of them have lost money? Yes, yeah, six out of seven have lost money as of January. Uh, last Friday's closing prices versus the respective placement prices. What about those who took placement last year where we told our GCP Global students to avoid at all costs? Yes, this is a table. Yes, look properly, ladies and gentlemen. You see that out of the 13 IPOs or other placement and this is the respective placement prices, you notice that eight out of the 13 would have lost you money based on last Friday prices. So ladies and gentlemen, if you are smart enough, you notice that you would uh, have avoided and should have avoided this respective placement prices. And you notice that at our class students, essentially, uh, GCP Global students have been advised to actually avoid this. And how do we know it? Well, this is an article that we have seen and foreseen this correction way back in uh, June of last year. It is entitled, you know, at corrections, major corrections, and prices for the smart investor. Well, for those of you who are new to this channel, please, please do take a look at our archive at gcpglobalwixsite.com. Uh, you know, we have archived the uh, last 33 years of research. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we have been in business for the last 33 years. Uh, I used to be the head of research and uh, probably one of the youngest head of research then. Then I went to work in Wall Street and then I came back to head institutional sales and I retired way back in 2009 to focus on REITs and philanthropy. Now, this is something that uh, 
uh, that based on our experience, we have actually told you that, look, you see, based on the, uh, on the uh, this, this article, if I may, is just go through with you. You know, um, I have mentioned that essentially, <clears throat> Okay, um, nothing stays forever and the forever will transcend. So being able to adapt and being able to change and understand how market changes, you know, is very important for the investor. Okay, so in this instance, you can see these gentlemen that this is the list, you know, I was asked by Business Times whether this current market sell-off, you know, will lead to a bad market. And this is what I say in uh, in uh, Friday's uh, Business Times. I was quoted to say that essentially, you know, the the uh, the market essentially will not lead into a bear market, right? Uh, even though when you actually have interest rates shooting up to close twenty percent during the nineteen seventies, you actually have a case, you know, where uh, where it is interest rates alone will not lead to bear market scenario, not even during the 1970s. Yes, I know, ladies and gentlemen, many of y'all may not have been born even during the 70s, but really, if you need to go back to the 1970s, this is probably the best time, you know, because the 70s were that 10-year period where almost every year there is a crisis. Mode. You know, it started in 1971 when President Nixon actually decided to go off the gold standard, Brampton Woods. And then actually, two years later, because that means in 1973 to 1974, the US market lost as much as 48% of its value because of surging inflation, because of surging oil price, which caused a triggered inflation, the fear of stagflation, that was the first time that stagflation was mentioned at all in economic terms, as well as actually people, the sight of people queuing to get petrol for their cars because of the OPEC crisis actually resulted in the underperformance of the Dow, right? So it was really not, even when inflation actually was moving up, you know, it only moved up closer to 20% in 1979 before Ronald Reagan became the president. So you can see, ladies and gentlemen, that Based on a good understanding of history, you can see that those of shattering moments in the 70s are probably one of your best studies to actually look at the psychology of humans and investors' emotions. In fact, you know, if you live through that time, you notice an investor at that time, you will be shocked that the Hong Kong market during that period fell from 1,800 points on the Hang Seng Index down to as low as 300 points. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's almost an 80% wipe off. In fact, there's, there's this particular movie called, uh, yeah, what is this called? Yes, the Da Si Dai, okay, or Dai, Dai Se Dai. Uh, you know, it was very, very popular, you know, and became because it actually captured the emotions of its times. You know, some of the best actors in there is actually, as you can see from the picture, yeah, that's Adam Cheng, who actually became more famous later when because he actually acted in the one's arm form, <laughs> one arm swordsman. Okay. But to cut the story short, ladies and gentlemen, you can see the 70s were a great study to see how investors reacted, you know, to every other year from 1973 right all the way up to 79, you know, uh, where the markets were very volatile. So really, I mean, the COVID crisis that we've seen through how market reacted, the current inflationary problems that we're experiencing uh, that could probably be imported, highlighted from the US, is actually quite minuscule as compared to the problems we have in the 70s. But does this necessarily mean that the market will become or lead into a recession? No, probably the answer is not, or at least it's too early, right? Because when I actually forecast the problem, you know, at GCP Global, we look at essentially what is actually happening on a dynamic, constant basis. We look at the data, you know, and that's why we're able to come out way back in June last year, where we forewarned you about a possible correction. Okay, and here, this table, which is found in my article, you can see that, ha, ladies and gentlemen, over a period of 72 years, yes, we look at history over a long period of time, and you can learn from history, ladies and gentlemen. You can see there have been corrections, defined as more than 10% off, 
there are 35 times happening, uh, or rather 24 times happening. Uh, in terms of major corrections was defined by between a loss of 20%, but below 40%, we have seven times experiencing. And then what about crisis? A crisis is defined where prices drop by more than 40%. Over the last 72 years, there have been three times. So over the last 72 years, ladies and gentlemen, if we total up, you know, it is almost 35 times a recurrence of close to 50%. So if you are invested in the market, ladies and gentlemen, take it that it is very important to be invested or rather to know that a correction will happen once every two years. How deep or how bad that situation will be will depend on a few things. So at GCP Global Students uh, Investment Classes, we actually guide our students as to basically how to preempt and how to position before this correction, before the correction hits you. So like, for example, for REIT investors, we have told you that the initial period where the market adjusts the interest rate increases, it doesn't matter you know, whether it's actually eight increases that you saw in 2018 and 2017, you know, or the increases between 2003 to 2006 that rock the market, how to position before that. You know? So now that the correction has actually we predicted, preempted, right? Is it going to get worse? Well, we're going to explore this in our next class on 12 February. So if you're interested, do join us. And for those of you who actually follow tech closely, our next tech class is on 5th, or rather on the 19th of uh, March. You can sign up here. Okay, we're going to talk about whether it is option now that tech stocks have taken a whack, right? For example, this week alone, there have been three days, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, where the Dow swung ah, 1,000 points from top to bottom. The last time when we saw this was when? Yes, that's right, during the pandemic, right? Where 1,000 point swing was quite normal during that period of 19th of February, 2-0, 2 23rd of March, 2-0, 2 0, and then the bottom bottom of the 24. Right? So essentially, this is the kind of characteristic that we're seeing in the market. When people are fearful, this is where you, know, you become very, very greedy. Right? As I've said in my write-up, ladies and gentlemen, point four here, okay, now this article has five points. Point four, uh, what, as I've shared in my article, let me just repeat and read out to you. What do you do during market corrections, major corrections, and market crisis really determine how you build your wealth? Okay. Now, throughout my investing experience over the four decades now, it is quite fascinating that I've observed that the stock market is one area of life where you feel better when prices actually pull up rather than down. But you know, Singapore is very interesting in the sense that it completed a lot. You know, the prices of electricity, groceries, petrol, hawker, food prices, scopy, go up, you know. But with stock, if the prices go up, they don't complain. But it's only when the prices go down, like what they do now, then they complain, right? But really, is this the time to double up in your investments? Ah, this is what we're discussing in our classes in detail, right? Because having avoided the prices that we saw, you know, in taking the REITs placement, you know, all the prices now we can see are practically below, or some of them are way below the prices, you know, that we have advised to stay out, you know, are this option time, okay? Now, the second thing that we want to share with you in, and it's actually in the article is that the price that you pay for your stock will be a key determinant on your future returns. So at GCP Global, you can see that, you know, time and again, we are quoted that, we bet big in times of crisis. Yes, and we actually expound this and has been expounding this all this decades. Okay, this is because the price that you pay for a stock is the future determinant of your future returns. Okay, so when we look through this current correction, we love it. Okay, as much as we love to share it with you, and we love it that if you can join us for our next class on the uh, 12th of February for the REITs class or 19th of March for our tech class, you can see essentially where the bargains are. You can see, of course, you know, how to actually evaluate and sidestep 
you know, REITs, they are already priced on the high side. As what we have actually been warning our student investors since the middle of last year. And now this correction has happened. Right? It's simple sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, because, you know, the statistics do not lie. So at GCP Global, we focus on the data. And one of the key data that flashes, which is actually in my article in June of last year where I forewarned about this current correction is that we have already gone 480 days without any correction. The exact 480 days is roughly one month, sorry, one year, 10 months. Now, you remember in my article, I've mentioned that a correction of at least 10% happens at least once every two years. This has been the case last 72 years. Sometimes you don't need to be too smart. You just need to be cognizant of the realities of the market and be prepared. When the prices are high, are high sell, take your profit, sit for a while. And when the market correct as what we saw last week, it turns out to be your best buying opportunity. So for more and great buying opportunities, join us for our next few episodes. Once again, do like our channel, do subscribe out to our channel then send us an email to qualify for a lucky draw by recommending a friend you know give us your name your contact details and the name of a friend we recommend for our channel so once again happy chinese new year and hang on tight to your uh reads position cheers and happy new year again okay.